somber. <laughs> <laughs> and all I have right. at all, because I have teased her relentlessly. Even today? We just hit four o'clock, so we are live, folks. Our meeting has to start officially. Everyone doing good today? Doing well. Excellent. Yeah. So if you're a little foggy from that Super Bowl we had, today is Monday, February 8th, and it is the Joint Advisory Committee for the Recreation Group that is meeting here today on Zoom. And uh, we've got a regular schedule today, uh, not, nothing too extensive. Um, I don't see um, any, any visitors out there. You know, I'm missing the day that we could go live again and, and potentially have some visitors to, um, to talk with. But um, not so. That means we go right into our amenity reporting activities. And uh, we'll just start that right off. Did I see Debbie Sorensen join in yet? Yes. I did not. There I'm she is. Here. Okay. You want me to start? Yes, ma'am, if you would please. Okay, Chris, um, basically everything's fine at Branchwood. Um, I was over there today and have been dealing with Jessica on a couple issues along the trail. Um, the hours have been extended on Saturday. Yeah. Now, and because of that, the pool is totally booked. It has been booked both Saturdays and it's mostly, it's, it's open swim from noon until it's four or five and, uh, when it closes. But it's, been, it's gone over very well and the gym has been three quarters full that afternoon, Saturday afternoon, but the swimming pool is definitely in, uh, very popular. Also the pickleball courts are, are progressing. They've got all the cement poured and everything, so it looks great. And there have been some small weights added to the weight room, which is no big deal except the people are very, very happy because it's, it's the two and a half pounders. And I guess I would ask Jessica, if she's on, if they also ordered those for Reardon because they've gone over really well at Branchwood. So and that's all I have. I think they have some over there, um, Debbie, but I'll get with Kathy and make sure that they're out. Okay, because they've been very popular at Branchwood. All right. Thank Okay. Well, thank you, Debbie. That sounds like it's been a very active amenity. That's a good sign. So I will go on to Tyree Park and go over to Denise Klinger for that. Yeah. Hi there. Um, I was at the park over on the third at three o'clock in the afternoon and it was pretty quiet. There was actually a family that was fishing on the dock and then there was a father and son that was um, near the pavilion. The park was very clean as always. It was spotless. Um, trash was emptied. Bathrooms are still locked. Uh, the porta potty was clean. Um, uh, nothing much going on there. The uh, heavy equipment that had previously been there was gone, but it looked like there was a huge oil spill in the gravel of the parking lot from where the one piece of equipment was parked. Um, but other than that, there was really nothing going on. I did speak to the father and son, and the dad is a former lake ranger um, who says he comes to the park often. He usually is there fishing. His son was busy playing in the creek. And what's funny about that is I asked him what he would recommend we do for any amenity improvements. And he said to make the playground bigger. But, <laughs> Here is his son playing in the water in the creek and, and nowhere near any of the equipment. So uh, I thought I would at least pass that along. Okay. Um, the, the only comment that he did have is that he is um, asking me, I told him who I was and where I was with, and he did ask that we mention or make a request that the Lake Rangers patrol there more often. Because it's so remote, he has often had his boat tag stolen or his, the tag stolen off his trailer. Um, and so he keeps it with him on his boat and he thinks it's because it's so remote and it's so easy to get out of Bella Vista from there. People come in and a lot of rowdy folks at night. Um, and he was just telling me stories from when he was a Lake Ranger and he just asked that they patrol more. And even though I told him it wasn't in the scope of my report that I would at least pass it along to see if we can get that to the right people. Okay. So, 
That's it. Well, that was passed along, and I see a couple of folks uh, acknowledging that with nods. Yeah. So really appreciate that. Good report as usual. We could go to Jackie Gang now, and she should have the RV storage in Lake and Park reports for us. Uh, RV storage. Uh, I'm a proud lessee of a lot, uh, a slot this year. I was on a waiting list and was able to get in there, so I'll go through there to look at my stuff plus the uh, access there. But uh, it is priced competitively. Just kind of reporting when I shop around, it is very competitively priced to rent a lot there. Uh, no issues there. Lake okay. Ann, I frequent that uh, almost daily, and um, nobody's here. <laughs> Uh, it's just really quiet. There was one family one weekend actually at the trailhead lot uh, because it was flat and they were using their hoverboards and they're teaching their kids to bike. But basically, besides just bikers at the trailhead, there's not much activity on the, the actual Lake End Park at all, I think due to the weather. But everything looks good there. No issues. Yeah, good deal. Thank you for that. Certainly is winter, a little bit slower at the waterfronts. We could go right along then to Scott Drias, and he'll have the report for Rorden Hall and the complex there. Scott, you might be on mute. I see Scott being present here, but don't hear from him yet. If it's a technical issue, we'll have to circle back. Okay, looks like we got that resolved. Scott, I, I could see you're talking, but hit your mute button, I think. Is that working out for you just yet? <laughs> Scott? Did you see the message he put up on the chat? He, he yeah. sent a message. He just said, Go okay, back. I got it, guys. Yeah. We shall circle back to Scott. Thank you for that. So let's do uh, Lock Loman and uh, turn to Scotty Smith for that. Right. Um, overall, it looked great. They've got the, uh, the new small dog park. The fencing is all done. Um, it looks like they still need to do something with landscaping and putting some seating in there because uh, it's all kind of mud right now. I don't know if they're waiting for the weather to to get to warm up. Um, there were only two people there and I was there for about 30 minutes. Um, one of the people was running, so I didn't talk to her. Uh, and then the other gentleman was in the pavilion and he was smoking. So I figured he probably wanted to be left alone. So I left him alone as well, but right, everything right. Looked, I'm sorry. Good. I did good thing. Um, but it looked, everything looks good. There's still that funny rebar square thing that the baseball field uses. that's down on the ground. But other than that, everything looked good. Um, trash cans were empty you know i walked i walked down back behind the the new dog uh park and just kind of check things out and everything looked good just again not a lot of people out there i was there on a saturday about four o'clock um maybe 3 30 uh and it just was dead when i first got there i think there were three cars in the parking lot and i didn't see any people but then um like i said the one gentleman got out and went to the pavilion and and then i saw the woman who was running i don't know okay. where the third car was so um, just not a lot of people there, but I didn't see anything that needs paying attention to other than, again, I didn't know what was planned for the small dog park. But that's all I have for Lock Lamond. Okay, good. Uh, maybe we'll Rick will have something for us on that dog park. In his uh, yeah, report. I'll touch on that later. Okay. Yep, okay. Um, and Scotty, let's bring you way across town now to the east side so uh, you can tell us about Metfield. So Metfield is right by my house. So I drive by Metfield all the time. Um, although I will say it's been pretty, it's been pretty dead um, just because of the weather. Um, on yeah. the day I went over there and walked the grounds. Um, again, it was on Saturday and there was nobody there. Um, it was kind of overcast. It was a little drizzly um, by the time I got over there. Everything looks really good. The restrooms are clean. Trash cans are empty. Everything's in good shape. Um, they did recently finish the construction for the mini golf course. Um, there was still uh, one digger of some sort still on site, but it looked like pretty much they took everything down. Oh, Jake, Jake. Sorry. Um, 
There are some down larger branches near the bathroom that could probably be picked up. The wood sign I mentioned last month um, is still down. It just the sign that tells people what, where everything's located. Um, what I have on here. Um, I did want to make sure I mentioned um, there were there was a big discussion on Facebook. So even when I went to Metfield, I didn't talk to anybody because there was no one there, um, and it's been pretty empty. But one of the Bella Vista community groups, there was a Facebook post as people started to notice that the mini golf course was coming down. Um, and so myself and I believe someone else on rec committee, and I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, was it De Debbie? Was it you on there on that post as well? Yes. Yes. I've been, I've been involved in it too. Yes. So, you know, the rec center, the rec committee members were just kind of saying, well, we've discussed this in rec committee and we made our recommendations. You know, um, the one on Reardon is going to be updated, made to look beautiful and go check that out. We've had some problems with vandalism at Metfield. Unfortunately, it wasn't in the budget to do both. Um, encouraging members to, you know, attend our meetings virtually um, and just kind of sharing a little bit of information. Um, and people were really pretty up in arms about it. Um, I, I did not think to do a screenshot. I don't know if Debbie, did you get any screenshots from any of that? Uh-uh. Okay. Um, the basic consensus was people were really wanting this to come back onto the agenda as something to discuss in the future. Um, a lot of people saying they felt like, um, you know, the children need more things that people enjoy this doing things on, on this, the Metfield side and that they wanted to know if it was possible in the future to put that back on the, and it was a big group of people. Again, I didn't do a screenshot of it, but it was enough where I, wrote down how uh, we got to talk about this at our next meeting. Okay. Uh, we did have a, a line item on that and it might be difficult to circle back onto that agenda item. So let's, let's keep that discussion open right now and then we'll finish the other amenity reports. Cause I believe um, Jackie may have had a similar input and the intent here would be to um, express the feedback we've been getting about the, the mini golf course here. And uh, Joan isn't, available to attend this meeting here. So it'd probably be more appropriate to put this feedback on the table um, and then we'd be able to uh, discuss it in a little bit more detail uh, with Joan, of course, uh, during the March meeting. Uh, Chris, let me jump in, um, if you don't mind. Uh, so I wanna let everybody know that uh, Joan is gonna be on medical leave for two to three months. Um, and uh, uh, so we have uh, Jessica, and Trey on, and uh, they're gonna be splitting up Joan's responsibilities while she's on medical leave. Okay. So we can definitely talk about uh, the mini golf course today. I'm, I'm willing to, to fill in for, for Joan um, if you want to, or, or we can talk about it next month, whatever works for you. Okay, well, let's get that feedback out there um, right now. Um, Jackie, did you have some feedback you were interested in conveying? I guess the only other thing, I've, it was not only on that Facebook group, but there was another Facebook group that it was on earlier as well. And uh, I think one of the underlying messages I took from that is the lack of communication about it. And so I know when the uh, connections came out this last time, there was pictures of the Kingsdale swimming pool that had the pictures of the demolition and the work there. And I think that if we could just be a little more proactive on what we are doing in advance of for the members see it. I think that might be more helpful as well. Um, I think that something came out, somebody commented about something on that, some blast or something. I'm not on that. I don't know uh, what that form of medium is there for communication, but I guess that's just kind of my my focus would be on communication. So that it doesn't appear that we're doing something that um, shouldn't, that everybody shouldn't know about. You know, a lot of it, so um, let me jump in real quick here. So um, I did I did a little research, and uh, the topic was discussed at, at the September fourteenth rec committee meeting, the October twelfth rec committee meeting, and the January eleventh. Uh, we also included it in the e blast, and the e blast goes out to about twenty thousand people. Uh, with that being said, about uh, we have an open rate of about 35 to 40% on our e-blasts, which compared to industry standards is tremendous, but you still have 
60 to 65 percent that are not opening up that information. Um, so I think that we can always improve on our communication, uh, but I just did want to point out that when we send out that information, I can't force someone to open up the email. Um, and so if 60 to 65 percent of the people are not opening it, there's nothing I can do. Um, so we, we try and notify people and, and we can definitely try harder, uh, but I at least want to let people know about that. Tom, and I agree. Debbie? Go ahead, Debbie. Um, I just wanted to let you know too, and Jackie, with this email issue on, on Facebook, I went back and talked to a couple people on email. And once the e-blast came out last Friday, they just said, thank you for the information and we appreciate knowing and we're looking forward to the Reardon mini golf. So, I, you know, it, it doesn't solve anything, but it certainly helped. Um, and I don't know how we could, as, as a group, put everything down, think what we're thinking in the future. I mean, I, you know, I just don't know how we can do that. So I guess the, the decision on the putt-putt, it was, it was our discussion. And, and Chris, you and I talked quite a bit about this. Um, and, and I just know that Metfield would love to have a mini golf too. But let, I would say, I mean, change is hard, but I think once the Reardon mini golf gets in place, I think people are going to be very happy. Yeah, I mean, the, the committee was in a tough spot where we have the funding for, for one. We have two that are in disrepair. We have funding for one. Um, and it does make sense to place the, uh, the better, you know, the, a good one and centrally located so that it's, it's relatively convenient for everybody. So it, it's a tough decision that the committee made. And, uh, um, you know, uh, commenting on what... Uh, or adding to what Debbie said is I, re I fielded several emails. And once I told them uh, of when it was covered in the different meetings and so forth, most of the people came back to me and said, thank you, I wasn't aware of that. Um, so, um, but with that being said, I mean, we can always improve on our communication, uh, but communication is two way street, it's gotta come out of my mouth, it's gotta go into your ear. It's got to do both, and I can only control one. Okay. Thank you for that uh, recap, Tom. We appreciate that. Uh, team, is there anything else that we need to uh, look at with that discussion? Anything else on the mini putt-putt golf? I just would like to, and I, I appreciate it's in the minutes, but I think that to that point, everybody can look at the minutes and watch the video, but we know that that takes more effort than open up something with pictures in the mail. And that's, I think the, the thing is, the tool I think was a great communication of what's going on. Um, but uh, I would like to, I know at one point it was said that this is off the table for an agenda. And whenever we do talk budget extensions in the future, I just, would like to be able to put this back on the agenda to at least discuss again. Okay, thank you for that last remark, Jackie. Appreciate it. Okay, so back back to the uh, amenity portion of the discussion. So, Scotty, did you cover everything you needed to? Let me pull that up again. Oh, sorry. Here. Oh, they also finished the bike path. Um, I know they're still working on it all over the place, but um, the one going to, to Metfield to right where that skills park is, that's been completed. So that was different because they've had the construction uh, equipment there for a little while, just finishing that up. And it looks really good. So that's all I got. Yeah, I like that, that Greenway myself. I see folks yeah. on it all the time already. And it's got a couple patches that are still under construction, but it's getting close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, okay. Metfield looks great. Good. Thank you for that. So we could go over to um, Val, and Val should have some word for us, maybe on the trail there, because she's got Blowing Springs Park um, and the RV park there. Well, they're still working on it, and through Blowing Springs, they're getting pretty far on it. Um, they're putting fencing up through there, and um, 
looks like they're getting ready to pour down on uh, Mansfield and Manchester. They've got that all framed now. So that leads you into Blowing Springs. So it looks like when the weather breaks, they'll probably pour that area. Um, also, there were a few campers at Blowing Springs, but not as many as there usually is, probably because of the cold weather. And there were still bikers out riding. Um, that is about it. The bathrooms were nice and clean. The area looked nice and clean. So. Okay. Perfect. Appreciate that. We could now go over to Janet for a report on Tanyard Creek and also Lake Avalon Park. Oh, hi, everybody. Um, oh, am I on mute? No. Um, everything looked fabulous at Tanyard Creek. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to, to Rick. Um, we you guys filled in the holes that <laughs> I have tried to fall in innumerable times behind the bathrooms. I had a hard time finding them at first. That's why it didn't get done after the after you first reported it. Yeah, it, it was, um, you know, when leaves fill it up, you you got to dig. But uh, I was I was very happy about that. Um, Trails look good. Pavilion looked good. The landscaping was great. The bathrooms were so clean. There weren't many people out there, again, because of the weather. Um, but I did notice, and not being the structural engineer that probably is needed for this, um, on the, um, the, the short bridge that crosses over from the path that goes to the cave, whatever you call it, and crosses uh, the creek. One end of the bridge, one pylon, apparently there's a chunk of a, uh, a pole, <laughs> a large pole that um, has broken off. It's like a quarter of it. And I don't know if that does anything, you know, stability wise or if it's a problem, but somebody just might want to look at it. It doesn't look like it's a problem right now, but. Um, I'll definitely look for that one and be in touch if I, if I don't think I okay. understand what you're talking about. Okay. I, I um, I don't know why it caught my eye, probably because I was trying to watch my dog. And anyway, uh, it <clears throat> otherwise the the park looks really good. Um, Lake Avalon, the park, spotless, port potty was clean. Um, absolutely no activity. And again, because of the weather, but it's, um, such a lovely amenity that I know it will get plenty of use uh, soon. So that's pretty much all I have. Fantastic then. So we'll go down to the middle of our Zoom screen here and look at Mr. Gary Griffin for a report on the gun ranges. Thanks, Chris. Well, um, I went out the gun ranges last Wednesday, and uh, there weren't a lot of people at the rifle and pistol range. In fact, there was nobody except Gary, the attendant. Um, and uh, it's been a little bit slow, uh, at least when I've been going out on Wednesdays, because I can right now. And uh, so there's no one to talk to. But as I was leaving, like three or four cars pulled up. And I think like six or eight people piled out. <laughs> <laughs> and gave and gave him uh, something to do in there. So, and they were all going over to the pistol range. Uh, spoke with Carol at the trap and skeet as well. Uh, by the way, both both um, sites just look great. They really, really do. Um, on the um, on the rifle and pistol range, there's I think, and John, you can tell me when if if uh, February is going to be the time frame where they're going to go ahead and fill in the rock around the barbecue pit and the, and the picnic 
areas because that's the only thing that's left to do. And then from a trap and ski perspective, there was a group of people, I would say 10 to 12. And they were rotating like a tournament style, going over to uh, shoot trap and ski and, you know, and then go over and I mean trap and then go over and shoot ski next. So they were in a rotational basis. It was very interesting. Uh, and it was in the middle of, it was like somebody created their own, their own tournament. So okay. they didn't have a chance to talk to them because there was a lot of shotguns walking around. And I figured out, I did get a chance to say hi to a couple of them, but it's everything's in great shape. And, uh, and uh, that, that's it for this month. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, we'll swing back to Scott and see if the technical issues have resolved themselves for a report over on the Norton area. Thanks, Chris. Can you hear me now? <clears throat> You're good. All right, good. Yeah, sorry, I had the wrong uh, wrong microphone selected there. That uh, doesn't work when that one's not connected. <clears throat> so, Reardon Hall itself is in real good condition, real good shape. Um, there hasn't been any change for the clubs or group meetings at Reardon due to the coronavirus regulations. Um, exercise equipment is still spread out the way it's supposed to be and in the main hall, which kind of limits what they can do in there. They do have the reservation in process uh, in place where you've got to call in in the morning to get your reservation so that they know who's going to be there, make sure they have the right amount of people you know, to, to meet the state regulations, things like that. Um, Kingsdale Pavilion is, uh, is still in good condition. It looks like the deconstruction on the deck at the Kingsdale pool um, is nearly completed. There's still a few things I think they have left to pull out of there, but most of the old concrete is pulled up and, and hauled away. The day I was there walking around, there were contractors that were actually starting to pour new concrete right on the edge of the pool. They hadn't started on the deck, but I think they're going to do that in phases. Looks like they were <clears throat> starting on the edge there. Uh, the tennis courts in the center are all in good condition. All of the screens that I noticed on the last report that have been torn down because of the wind look like they've been reattached and put back up. So those all look good. Um, tennis center still on its winter schedule. So when I was there, it's actually 40 degrees that day, but there was nobody there in the office. Um, tennis courts are seeing a lot of players. So you know, the days where the temperature is above 40 and it was sunny, uh, I think the day I was out there was like 55. I noticed that of the eight courts, Five of them were in use, so uh, just driving by there other times, just checking on it. They're, they're seeing a lot of tennis players out there, so not bad for January. You know, a, lot of, a lot of use out there. Um, the playground at Kingsdale, still in need of the repairs that I noted back in the September report. Um, still some things out there that are broken, haven't been replaced. Um, maybe because it's too cold to address those right now, but you know, as we get closer to spring, we may want to take a look at those and you know, make sure that we don't get anybody hurt on that. Uh, basketball court, shuffleboard deck, all look to be in good condition. Um, haven't seen any work on the mini golf course. I might have missed the note when they were going to start um, any work on that, but I hadn't seen anything started there. Um, the only two things that I really noticed for areas of review um, one is the, that recent rainstorm that we had, where we had that real heavy rain back in January, washed out a significant portion of the trail right before the bridge that's near the playground. So it looked like the water, instead of going under the bridge, uh, went around the bridge and washed out quite a bit of the rock and the gravel there. It made a, made, made a pretty nice little hole there that somebody could step in or definitely not be able to ride their bike there because it was... Uh, a pretty deep hole. So we may need to look at that, make sure that that area gets reworked. So when the water does flow, it goes under the bridge instead of trying to go around it. And the other thing I noticed, uh, you know, with the tennis courts being full, people weren't parking in the parking spaces. And I noticed a truck was actually parked in the no parking area and was right in front of the steps. So it would make it difficult for somebody mm -hmm. to walk up and down the steps if they needed to get up there. Um, you know, I could walk around it. It wasn't an issue for me, but, you know, people with difficulties walking or, or stepping would have had difficulty with that truck in the way. So I don't know if we have anybody that checks on those. Um, when I talk to Kathy, she says usually if she sees that, she'll try to bring it to somebody's attention, but 
just wanted to, to note that out. All right, very well, very comprehensive as usual, and we appreciate that. And it brings us to the report on London Park, uh, Lake Windsor, at Lake Windsor, which is uh, the entity I have my eyeballs on. And uh, just as echoed by other folks here, there wasn't really any activity going on out there when I visited. And the park looked spectacular. The, the restrooms were perfectly clean. The fish cleaning station was perfectly clean. And the only evidence I had of use really was um, on the dock from geese that probably visited. But uh, the, the amenity was in fantastic shape. So um, we got great facilities ready for spring, I suppose. And that will wrap up our section on the amenities. And we have covered the golf here. So next up on our agenda would be um, the, the folks here, the, the committee members. We've got some uh, uh, terms that are expiring and uh, we need to vote on some term extensions. So I'll just go through that here. We have Denise Klinger and Scotty Smith, who filled um, a partial term from, from a predecessor. So they're eligible to, to, to be voted and move forward in their positions. And we also have uh, Val Kortner and Deb Sorensen, who uh, look like they've reached term limits. So um, that's what the records show here. Is that also what is reflected uh, for yourself, uh, Debbie and Val? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I was afraid you were going to say that because it's going to be sad when you leave our committee here after all the terms that you have served. So um, we're going to have to put out some applications and I talked to Tammy on that already and uh, she'll go ahead and get that out in the next uh, March communication for our, our community membership to apply uh, for those two open slots. Chris, and then go ahead, Chris, Debbie. Can I interrupt? Um, I have talked with Tom about the fact that we've had the welcome meet and greet run through the recreation committee. And what I've agreed to do is once I'm off my term limits, I'm going to continue the meet and greet and we just won't run it through the recreation committee. So, and I, I will be in close um, communication, obviously with Tom and Tammy and everything. So I just wanted to let you know that the welcome meet and greet will continue. And um, we just won't run it through the welcome or the uh, recreation committee. Okay. I gotcha. You. you know, that was kind of like an extracurricular thing um, anyway, so I'm glad yes. that you are staying involved with it. That's it's right in your wheelhouse there. So uh, you do a fantastic yeah. job with that. So glad you're continuing on. Okay, so let me ask then, um, Denise, are you interested in going forward? Yes. All right. And uh, how about yourself, Scotty? You're on mute. Now you're unmuted. Okay. Um, how our term now? I thought was through October. Was it not? Was it August? I've COVID it's has through June. My brain. It's, it's through June. June. I may be a little bit ahead of the schedule. So what I'd like to find out is um, who is interested in uh, continuing on, and then we could have the committee vote, um, and then they will know how many folks we need to recruit here uh, in March and April before the next term starts in June. Okay, um, I will not be running again. We, um, this cold weather in Arkansas, I love it here, but we are considering a move down south, back to where I'm from. To okay. Portugal. So I'm putting it out there now in the official, uh, but basically you guys are the first ones to know this. My husband and I have just been discussing it. Um, but we love it here. And so we're, we're still not sure if we're gonna rent our house out here so we can still come back sometimes. Um, that we haven't decided, but but serving on the rec committee, um, I have really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to serving until um, my term is up in June. Um, and we just, okay. you know, one of our challenges is finding a neighborhood like this anywhere else. So. Yeah. Well, you know what? Winter's almost over, so maybe you'll change your mind when it warms <laughs> up in a few weeks. Uh, 
Probably not, but we've got family down there and some other. All right. Well, well, thank you. It was a, it was a pleasure so far and I'm glad you're going to uh, finish out your term. Yep. So, all right. Um, Tom, are we um, allowed to, to vote for Denise at this point? Is it um, an okay time? Yeah, absolutely. And, and just remember, this is a recommendation. It goes to the board and the board does the final vote. Um, I'll bring it to their attention and they'll vote at the end of this month. Okay. All right. So I'll put it out there for a motion. Do I have a motion to uh, vote for Denise Klinger as a recommendation to uh, continue on on the Recreation Committee? Debbie motion would, for Denise. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Debbie. Okay. Debbie, I'll second it. <laughs> All right, so we, we, could, we could have a vote here. I hear two motions and an acceptance for the second. So I got a good visual on everybody except for a couple. Um, I see uh, one, one hand going up. Use your little thumbs up on your uh, Zoom controls or raise your hand. That works too. One, two, three, four. Debbie, Debbie says yes. Six. Okay. Yeah, we've got, we, we're good. So we could, we could make the recommendation to the board for Denise. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. All right, and then we'll need to go out for uh, three applications for the new June term, Tammy. And folks, if you know anybody, of course, uh, ask them to, to fill out the application and uh, we'd love to hear from any of your uh, your friends and stuff. Tammy will be, it will include it in the uh, e-blast that goes out every Friday, but the best way to get new members is through committee members going out and hunt them, hunting them down. So uh, if you can put effort into that, I'd really appreciate it. But uh, uh, Tammy will definitely include it in the newsletter. Do you guys mind if we put that on Facebook? Sometimes people will sure. post things about the amenities. I don't know if there's any problems with that. Sure, absolutely. Okay. All right, great. So moving on then, it's going to be turned over to the staff. And, and Tom, you merge in at the perfect time there because uh, you could have the first slot and, and uh, take it away. All right, just a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, we were talking about uh, Blowing Springs, the connector, uh, and uh, I got word last week that it should finish uh, in April-ish. So we'll call it May just in case any, any further delays happen. Uh, and then member services has been extremely busy. It's that time of year of getting people signed up for their golf, annual golf memberships, their, their boats and so forth. So, uh, and some of these people have not gone through where they have to do it online uh, because at this time last year, we hadn't really, we barely heard about COVID. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, the doors are closed. So they're going through a lot of retraining and uh, getting everybody up to speed on that. So give them a little patience, but they're getting a lot of people signed up and that's really all I had to cover. Tom, this is Debbie. I have a, a quick question for you. Um, and this would have been one for Joan, but in the past, Reardon has been closed generally on an annual basis for a weekend to redo it. Is there any plans, are there any plans to close Reardon for a weekend or because the, the equipment spread all over? I know the flooring, the reason I'm asking is the flooring in the, in the big gymnasium obviously has gotten a huge amount of use. And I didn't know if they're planning to redo the flooring in there or if they're just going to put everything on hold until we get rid of COVID. I'm going to let you see if Jessica can jump in on yeah. this one. So, Debbie, so right now there's no plans on closing Reardon. Okay. Um, they did wax it last year, and um, they actually really closed it, too, because they did all the painting. Painting, it, yes. Mm -hmm, they repainted, and... There is going to be some work done, but it's on the outside. So right now there's no plans to. Okay, good. Close. Okay. Does that take care of your questions, Deb? Yep, it sure does. All right, good. We can move on to uh, Rick then for his reports. All right. A um, couple big items to talk about. The dog park, which we uh, touched on a little bit. Um, the fencing is done. Uh, we still have uh, the concrete entrance way to pour. Um, we've got a water line to put in and uh, some final grading and then finally sod. 
Um, we're waiting on slightly drier weather for the final grading, which will make for a, a, a better finished product when we're finished. We, we really at this point aren't uh, holding anything up because we still have to wait for the sod to uh, take hold and, and green up in the spring. So uh, we're still looking at a late spring opening for that. But uh, I'm very happy with how the, the, the fence looks. Nice straight lines. The, the top rail is straight as an arrow. Looks, I, I feel like it looks really good. The lake and sinkhole um, kind of impacts a number of things. Uh, a lot of lake related things, but also the bike trails are real close there. Um, the research on the extent of the sinkhole is complete. We expect a full report on that by February the 19th. Um, <clears throat> we had drawn Lake Ann down two feet in order for that investigation to take place. Uh, since, it's, since it's done and we're kind of on hold right now, we have allowed the lake to come back up. But we do anticipate when we get a clear idea of what we're doing to fix it, that we will have to draw the lake down another two feet. Having said all of that, it is still my um, uh, hope to have that all the work completed before recreation season opens in the in the late spring. So in the meantime, we do have a, uh, a kind of a roof structure over that hole. Um, we were a little bit concerned about uh, people curious people wanting to peer down in it and um, uh, it was not supported very well along the edges so we, we did take care of that recently. And then the Rayburn drawdown, uh, it's down 50 inches as of this morning. We're hoping to get it down 72 inches and we feel like we can do that if we don't get any big rain events. Uh, if we can get it down that far, we will be widening and lengthening the um, and doing some repairs to the boat ramp, which uh, in its current state is very hard to get in because about halfway down, there's a little dog leg to one side. And, and if you're backing a trailer, it makes it kind of difficult. <clears throat> um, grounds maintenance, we've been working on clearing woody vegetation from the dams uh, prior dam inspections and sinking Christmas tree fish habitat. And we did hire a temporary um, fisheries and water quality technician to fill in uh, for someone on extended medical leave. And that's it. All right, super. Let's go to John, John Urquhart. Thank you. So like Gary said, uh, everything's been kind of slow over at uh, both gun ranges, uh, really. Uh, the weather has slowed us down considerably. Um, we're still up 10% uh, compared to last January as far as attendance numbers, uh, but we're down almost 25% from December to January. So it gives you an idea of just how kind of cold it's been. Now, when we've had nice weather, it's it's been fairly busy, but when the weather is uh, lackluster, uh, nobody's coming out. Um, the Trap 2 building uh, over at... Trap and Skeet, the maintenance on that building still continues. Uh, we were working on some drainage issues that we had there uh, whenever we were rebuilding it. Uh, and we've discovered uh, maybe it was a little bit bigger issue than we than we thought. Uh, the ground there is just holding moisture to that building. And, and I'm not sure if you guys have ever looked at it, but it's sunk into the ground several feet. Uh, and we thought it was an issue with the sealed block because it's been in the ground for 20 years, but as it turns out, it's just that area wants to hold water. So uh, we've got a swimming pool out there right now where uh, excavators dug a big hole and we're trying to dig some, uh, some drainage for that area. Uh, just as soon as that's done, uh, we hope to get that same equipment over to Rifle Pistol and complete the maintenance uh, that we were talking about on the berms and get the gravel moved over there. Uh, so hopefully that will still take place in February, but a lot of that's going to come down to how long this maintenance takes over a trap and skeet. Let's see. Officially, our classes are going to start back up. Our gun range classes are going to start back up at the end of February. Uh, 
myself and the instructor and, and some of the range officers, we met together and, and came up with a list of new guidelines. We felt like we did really good last year as far as COVID safety and that sort of thing. Uh, but of course, this time of year, uh, we're especially concerned with it just because everybody wants to crowd into a building. Uh, we know that numbers have been up. Uh, so we're going to limit the class sizes across all classes to just six people now. Uh, mm -hmm. But we will offer additional classes. We'll have more classes with less people, uh, which we did that last year, uh, but we're going to take them down even further now. Um, let's see, what else? We have done a couple of impromptu classes uh, just to kind of spin out our, our waiting list uh, through the winter. Uh, they've been really cold classes, but uh, so we really don't have a waiting list as of right now. So we'll be going uh, fresh starting and that first class will be on February 21st for a concealed carry class. That's all I've got. All right, John, thank you. Now we'll move over into the recreation and wellness department and Jessica has the lead on that according to Joan, so Jessica. Thank you, Chris. So hello to everybody. And there's a few of you I've still not met because of COVID. But first note, my heart is breaking because Debbie's leaving because I'm out of Branchwood. Oh. Um, so I'll still, I'll still walk the trail for you. <laughs> thank you. I know I can count on you, Debbie. Um, and so for real quick, just to give Scott um, an update. So we have those parts to fix the Kingsdale playground. You're right, they do need repairs. We've been waiting for some nicer weather, um, but those parts are in and we've got a plan to, to fix those before spring. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is forgive me, Scotty, but I know you talked about that wood sign that was down over at Metfield um, last week. And so if it's still down and they're done with the trail, I'll make sure to check on that. All right, and um, so just to give you guys an update on capital projects, so the Kingsdale pool, um, Scott was right, the coping, which is outside of the pool, is completely finished, um, and they've laid a little less than about a quarter of the deck, um, so they're moving right along. This week might slow them up, cold, misty, rainy weather. Um, the Branchwood pickleball courts, the Concrete is curing. Uh, the fence will be the second thing that comes um, and then the painting of the courts. And then we will um, get rid of the leftover concrete from the tennis court and put some fill dirt around the new court. So um, mini golf, um, we've got all the features are in, the signs in, um, it'll be ready for install. Um, they have, Scott, they have started painting um, doing some light painting work on the bridges and whatnot. Um, probably won't do any this week, but that's, that's where they're starting. Um, but we have the carpet and that'll go in when, when weather permits. Um, I will make a, the marina will be opening March 16th with limited hours. Um, the trails, uh, touch on this for Trey. Um, so construction for the widening at Lancashire and Chelsea, um, that's going to be, there's going to be some, it's going to be closed for at least the next, that trail, which is specifically tunnel vision, but the little sugar that'll be closed for the next, probably at least 90 days. Um, could be a little longer and reared in this week, just so you guys know the second, uh, starting Wednesday through Friday will be the second round of the vaccines for the people that already received them there. So if you see it getting busy or somebody inquires, we've had a lot of inquiries, how can I come in and get the vaccine? This is the second round. It's also ran through the city, but this is the second round. So you can't come in unless you've gotten the first round from them, um, obviously. And I believe, oh, and we are gearing up. The last thing I'll say is we're gearing up for the Easter egg Um we won't have a hunt again um, this year due to COVID, but we had a super successful drive-through um, last year. I don't know if you guys remember that, but we had like 220 some cars that came through. So we're gearing up for that. And that's, that's what we're going to do this year. And that'll be the Saturday before Easter, but there'll be some things that'll come out. We'll talk about it more, but we are, we have begun gearing up for that. 
And that's it for me. Hey, Jessica, right. this is Debbie. I have a real quick question. Is there any way we could get a bench or two at the mini golf? Out at the mini, oh, at the Kingsdale mini golf? No, yeah, at the Kingsdale. I'm just thinking if families go, it would be nice to have some kind of a seating area or a bench or something that would be fun because you know it's going to be used. Yeah, um, I mean, we can certainly look at that and see we've got that pavilion down there, the big pavilion. Um, I, I want to say there's one bench that is up there by the trail, but I'll have to look. Um, but yeah, we can look into, into getting, you know, we didn't budget for it, but we can look into getting some benches. Okay. I'm, I'm sure, I'm Great. sure it's going to be busy, especially when we open. So that's definitely a good point. Jess, we've got two benches that are planned, one that's along the trail and then one that's closer to the, um, that's going to be closer to the playground, but there are the, we've got two, um, two All planned. Right. All right, there we go. Thank Asking you. Asking shall receive. I know. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got one bright spot left to talk about. That would be the marketing report from Judy. Hi, hey guys. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm Judy Griffin. I'm with the marketing department. And I'll say first on a personal note to you, Deb, um, thanks so much for everything you've done. I really, um, you, you really accomplish a lot for our community and kudos to you for um for being so available and so willing to work and help out. Well, I enjoy it very much. I've enjoyed working with you and I still will, but just not. Right. <laughs> so um, marketing, we're busy. The um, Inside Magazine will be out in March. Um, but I, I'm going to kind of detour just a minute if Tom doesn't tell me to shut up. Um, but I, this is more golf, but I don't know how much you guys are aware of um, the APT tournament. Um, APT is an amateur professional tournament that um, this will be the fifth year that we uh, sponsor that tournament in Bella Vista. Uh, traditionally, it was called the Cooper Communities Charity Classic and we've renamed it to the Bella Vista Charity Classic. And um, if you're a golfer, you know about it. If you're not, one of the reasons I wanted to bring it up is that um, this is a, a, a um, professional golfers that come in, uh, they play against each other. Um, and so we get a lot of traffic from not only local golfers, but uh, in the Northwest Arkansas area. Um, and then at the end of the tournament, there's a pro-am where our golfers um, can match up with a pro and um, there's another tournament. So it's a lot of fun, fun for them. Uh, but the reason I bring it up is because it, the proceeds from the tournament go directly to five different charities here in Bella Vista. Um, and so it is a, a big money maker for some of our charities. It's, um, I hope I can say them all, uh, the Bo Boys and Girls Club, um, the Animal Shelter, the Rotary, um, the uh, 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 Radio, and then the um, courtesy van. So those are the, the charities that benefit from it. So my ask for you guys is, um, you know, if you know of anybody that would like to sponsor um, either a charitable donation or a business that might wanna advertise or promote their business, we do have a couple hundred golfers come in from out of town, but we also have about 200 to 220 uh, local volunteers that help out with that tournament. Um, you know, as long as just a, a lot of, it's, it's an active time, it's a fun time. And even if you don't golf, it, it's a great um, opportunity to get out on the courses um, and take a look and uh, participate in that way. So um, a, uh, if, you, if you know of anybody that might be interested in sponsorships and they can get with me. So yeah, that's, um, I think my pitch for the day. I hope you guys have a great month and let me know if I have any questions or I can help you. Judy, one of the things on the APT Golf is that it's not just young men uh, professionals. We've had women last year and we're having women again this year. Yeah, thanks, Deb. I meant to mention that because that's a big deal um, 
to have the, the APT at ASTIS last year because of COVID to step in and host the women. And they were so happy with, um, with the core courses and how the POA manages tournaments that they asked us to go ahead and um, sponsor that tournament as well. So it's in June, June 21st, that week of, that week of June. So mark your calendars. If you're, if you're not a golfer, it's a good time just to kind of go and poke around and, and see other people and, um, and learn a little bit more about that part of our community. Okay, good way to conclude our meeting as usual. I'd like to ask a favor that everyone sends in their reports to Janet, please, uh, today, and uh, we'll be able to roll that up for the board in a week or so. And that should be about it for today. It is going to, well, we got our next meeting will be March 8th, uh, Zoom, of course. And uh, until then, uh, stay safe. Chris, and well. I've got it. Chris, I've got a, a one comment, one question before we Okay, go, go ahead, on. Jackie. For my information, the if you bring an RV to the campground, do you get guest passes? to use other facilities, the amenities? I don't know. I'm looking for someone that might know that answer. If not, we'll have to circle back. Jessica, maybe you could jump in, but I don't think, yeah, I think the answer is no. Yeah, no. Um, no, not that I know of. Are they huh. giving them any, if, if they're, you know, if they're property owners, then they can get guests. Okay. Passes. Yeah, I was just online. I I was asked, and so I I just thought oh, I'd okay. ask before I called. So I just it was just the information for me to be equipped with that knowledge is all. And um and on that same line, I had a family member was looking to come down, and they actually asked me if the Blowing Springs RV Park and the Villa Vista Campground is one and the same. When you do Google it, you get both names, and it is a little confusing because I know there's the Blowing Springs Park and then the RV, but it was a little confusing. But if they look a little closer, the mileage is all the same and all that. They can tell it's the same thing. But I did want to make one comment about I actually needed to use my Bella Vista app the other day, and it's wonderful. I just think that's a, a great a great tool that we're using uh, with our members. I think it's great. Very good. Yes, yes, indeed. So that really is a good way to end the meeting here. So thanks again, everybody. Chris, and, this is Debbie. Uh, we'll Okay. Chris, okay. I have, Sneak it in, Deb. Welcome. Meet and greet is February 20th. And just so you know, we have 29 people registered, but we have 10 different states out of the 29. So, and they're coming from all over. So, and I, I always, Kim keeps track of where everybody comes from, but February 20th is our next meet and greet, and that'll be on Zoom. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Any last comments? <laughs> we think you got it all now, huh? All right. Great meeting with everybody. Hope everyone uh, stays well, and we'll see you next time. Thank Bye -bye. you.